I'm Jeff Stewart, licensed marriage and family therapist and the host of this podcast, From Crisis to Connection. Sometimes it can feel like if I, yeah. if, if I soften, and, or not even soften, but if I'm not approaching this, then am I being a doormat? Right. Um, I'm not making him be accountable. Um, but what you described is you're actually handing him the reins and saying, hey, not of your life, but of himself and saying, hey, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to observe and I call it information. I'm going to gather information yes. and with that information. I'm going to decide what I need to do for me. And this is such this dance that we're doing around the stuff of, around attachment and then the stuff around, you know, trauma and how all that interweaves it, it gets, these are the moments where it gets really tricky is, you know, <laughs> these dynamics are just so nuanced and, and so tricky and can be so triggering. So for listeners, you know, I just want you to know that this is, a, this is such a tough, tough space and we hear you, um, whatever side of the, whatever side of the table you're sitting on, that this is, um, it can be really confusing. And, and like you said, there are options out there and odds are good. If you're listening to this podcast, you're, if you're the betrayed, the betraying partner knows what those resources are, right? Therapy and group and, and yeah. all of those good things. But yeah. Yeah. Tough. I mean, I, I think of it this way, another way maybe to put this, um, is, if if the betrayed partner is pursuing and trying to figure out what's going on and the betrayer freezes up in a sense if she decides okay I, i'm going to back off like i i recognize that there's no accountability here like he's frozen he's not responding to me i can back off like i'm going to extend that level of like support and compassion perhaps for him being overwhelmed or even just for this moment, like it's not working. So even for myself, mm -hmm. I'm just going to extend my, com some compassion to myself. I'm going to back out of this dynamic, whatever angle she's coming at it from, I'm going to disengage. Yeah. And I feel like in that moment, um, she's making a conscious choice to like try and improve a situation. I feel like that now puts the ball in the court of the betrayer to decide how am I going to improve this situation? How am I going to improve right. this relationship? Am I just going to like allow her to like always be the one that takes one for the team? Am I going right. to, am I just going to take advantage of this and basically kind of skate away and, you know, hope it never comes up again? Or am I going to say, you know what, you just did something that like tried to make an improvement. What can I do to make an improvement for myself, yeah. for us? And I, I feel like if somebody's not engaging, because the truth is, is that somebody who's frozen will thaw out. Once the yeah. disengagement happens, they'll thaw out, you know, the next day or whenever. And so when they're in that, and to me, it's kind of like coming back to yourself for a moment in that space, mm -hmm. what are they going to do with that? What do they tell mm -hmm. themselves about what just happened? What rules are they following? Are they just going to deny it and move on or blame, or, or are they going to look at it and say, that wasn't very pleasant. I wonder why I do that. Or I wonder how I can stop doing that. If somebody's trying and finding their way out of that, then that's a safe person, to, I, I believe. I believe that's somebody who is probably gonna be pretty workable. Thanks for stopping by and watching this little clip of my podcast interview. If you wanna catch the full episode with this guest, you can click on the link below. It'll take you to my podcast and you can listen to the whole thing. Once again, I appreciate your support. I've got lots of other episodes you can check out as well. And I'd love to hear what you think about it.